the latest comedy special that's out your sincerely on Netflix have you seen it no it's damn funny you should check it out the special is hilarious <laughs> i spent so much time with the special that after we were done with post production and the last time i sat on that color grade and i watched it for the 150th time i was like i can never watch this again so and have you never seen it on netflix <laughs> if i see myself i only see like oh i could have changed this i could have fixed that uh, this is wrong this is lame this is bad and so i was like i can't do anything about that now so i'm happy to just let people have it and uh, do with it what they will wow that is yeah. very uh, inspiring and defeatist at the same time i mean it's okay <laughs> it's, it's not good. defeatist like it's uh, it's just i'm accepting what it is now what it is is it's a bit of content that doesn't belong to me anymore damn sir yeah. yo that so people that love shit's it deep. i mean good and if people hate it uh, that's also fine but it's not I mean, who, why you it's no me? more yours. <laughs> yours is it's your not in my that. house. I I I gave it to a different person's house. Uh, wow, that's a yeah. great way of looking at shit. Like it's no more my thing anymore. It's done. My thing yeah. was the journey of making the special. Now yeah. the special is made. Now the journey you. and the memories of the special are like fully mine, and those are very mm-hmm. special to me. But the mm-hmm. special itself, as a film piece of content, it belongs to the audience now. Damn. Son, when did you become so mature? <laughs> I didn't want to feel sad anymore. <laughs> I had to so find that's ways. the problem. Uh, yeah. Ability to write a joke has nothing to do with your comedy ability. Just be sad. Yeah. Karan Gill, put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> I feel like that's some sort of a paraphrasing, but <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> the amount of liberty you've taken with the words I've said, you've just used the word "sad" in a new sentence yeah. <laughs> of your own imagining. I think okay. I'm. Yeah, I think I'm projecting. <laughs> Remember, if you are happy, you will just you will just interview people who are sad and doing better in life. I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know. Am I paraphrasing? Could be. All right. What is the structure and how did you? Because it's so complexly interwoven. Yeah. But every thing that's open finds its closure at the end. Yeah. Everything yeah. is tied well in, and it's very tough to write a very linear special. how were you able to achieve all of that like what went through that so when uh, i finished taping my previous special i was uh, pushed into a corner because i had so many shows to do and uh, so i started going on stage and i got three jokes first i got dog story which was initially 15 minutes long which is me take my dog to place and it was 15 minutes long it has mm-hmm. all these other things in it uh, then i got uh, letter writing and i got one more joke which is since been cut okay So I had these three jokes and like just fucking garbage jokes to stitch it together for one hour. Okay, <laughs> just horse shit. Then I uh, the, like I had to stop after after like six months because I was like, this is coming together the exact same way as my previous special. There's nothing new about this. There's nothing mm. exciting. Of course, the jokes are new, but that's mm. all it is. It's just jokes that I'm connecting, and I'm not improving if I keep doing this. And it made me very sad because I was like, I'm not improving the way I want to as a comedian. I wanted to do something different, so I got this letter writing observation. I was like, "Cool." Then, in one fell swoop, I got the metaphor bit. Okay, hmm. I'm feeling. I was like, "What am I really trying to say? And how can I say it without saying it?" Uh, and so the metaphor bit came fully formed. You saw it when I first performed it. Yeah. You saw the very first time I did it on stage, and it made no fucking sense. But I was like, "This is so cool. This is a new thing, finally." Okay, and it's going to be a real challenge. Mm-hmm. to pull this joke off so that metaphor and tita took fucking forever mm-hmm. to get fixed one word at a time one thing at a time new jokes coming new words going okay so now i have five six i i think of it in terms of five six bits um uh, le- metaphor closes but it doesn't have a satisfying conclusion and then i do observations about letter writing and the show is over and the people keep used to keep leaving the show thinking like this show is almost something <laughs> <laughs> Then it never got to be anything. I right before I was going on tour, it was the first time I started going for therapy. Then for the first time, and then she told me like, "Hey man, you have like severe depression." I was like, "It took you one month to figure that out." <laughs> <laughs> My opening line was, "I have depression." <laughs> this is actually true. We were taping a comic stand, and I was sitting in my trailer like this. Okay, mm. just like. Please call me for the shot. Let me tape it so I can go home and fucking this day will be over. It's horrible. And then a friend came in. and she was like hey man are you okay and i always say yes but for that time i was like no i'm not and she was like oh 
and then she just left. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I thought the that was, came in. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> okay. So I was like, okay, I'll start it with this because this is the fucking funniest thing that's happened to me in a long time. <laughs> Another thing was one of my best friends said, "Hey man, don't kill yourself. You're my you're my only friend." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's so fucking funny. How you're so selfish <laughs> about my life. <laughs> But um, okay, I was like, I have some thoughts and some feelings about this and some. uh we stock bar but it's just bumming people out and i just i kept trying to tour with it and it used to come around the 30 minute mark because i was like okay i'm funny now okay so now here here you go uh this is right after i i went to the hospital for a hernia checkup so i got that full bit from just mm. going to the hospital once mm. and obviously it needed a lot of work but and then every time i came to this part of the show and people used to get pissed off or bummed out and i was like man what the fuck how do i fucking fix this so i found a way of okay i'm going to put this in a different way Mm. Then I was like, every now everything is working because people don't know that guy, and it's almost like it's almost close to like punching down jokes. Like it's mm. a very thin line. Mm. I offended a lot of people. I got a lot of walkouts from shows, and really? I angry messages afterwards. I was like, yeah, if you stayed till the end of the fucking show, this would have all made sense. But people, it was too much for people, so they walked out. Was it uh, too so, real for people? Is that what the no? Thing was? It was like because I'm talking to a different friend. It's hard. It impact is harder. If I talk like a buffoon who understands nothing, and I'm making like jokes at this guy's ex- the expense of this guy's mental health, and so there the audience gets to have that laugh because I know they want to have it. I mm. know they want to have it. It's not proper to have it, but I know want to have it. And I was like, bro, it's okay. And then you get the other side also in the end of the show. And now that you have two characters where you reveal it, reveal it's one. What's the gold standard for that? It's fucking Fight Club. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, Fight Club is going in the show. Yeah. And so now I have. 25 pieces yeah. in my hands and i'm saying them in order but and it's funny though, it's really funny the whole time but the end fucking sucks i mm. have no ending it's bits back to back and at the 50 minute mark it becomes a metaphor story oh he's mm. talking about himself oh what the fuck so mm. then i had this idea i can freeze the whole thing in terms of the letter rather than just introducing the letter at the end i can structure this whole thing in terms of the letter and if the letter itself is a matter for then that just seals up my show i was like okay fucking great mm. and uh, it was it took a lot of bravery okay mm. because i have to do like a new show on stage the first time it's very high stakes if it sure. doesn't work and it's been like at the end the i have to say okay that's the show and it's not a funny part and so i have to do 10 minutes of old material so they go home laughing but like the ending of the show was brutal it took so much time the emotional journey of the show oh my god it took so much fucking work <laughs> so much agonizing over getting it right how much high stakes failures the end bit sometimes i would get up to the point and i was like it they're just not ready for anything emotional in this show so i have to i had to end two shows hmm so if i knew 45 minutes in the narrative is not working i have a different way to end to the close show. the show which is an a, observational bit and close, i have a close, different close. fucking closure i have two shows you get a simple <laughs> same as you want you get a bunch of jokes back to back standing ovation that or you get this joke get this show which is really complex <laughs> but because of the nature of what it is i have to slow the pace in parts yeah, so things yeah, yeah. hit harder there has to be moments where you're just like ah oh. and so all good now we're in the last leg of the tour in australia i sorry in america i do the letter structure it's working i try 500 million permutations here's a fun fact i was changing the ending until the day of the recording i used to change the ending at every show the aham gachami so it was four or five things but i used to change the order every day okay 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 ha ha okay got it so basically how it all yeah towards the last 5 minutes there's a lot of callbacks cut 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 that keep coming in yeah And you But keep then again, audience, you know, I was like, I don't want it. It's not just callbacks, though. This is the conversation, and all these things make sense to be saying it. And they have a different meaning than they did the first time. Hmm. Hmm. Declare in the first time is in the context of cricket. In the second time, it's in the context of retirement or hmm. whatever you thought it was. Uh, Going to America, the structure is there. The ending is satisfying, unsatisfying. I'm balancing it. It's getting tighter. It's working. But I'm feeling that there's something missing from the show. The emotional impact is not as much as I want. So. I am confused. I I sat down and I wrote out the bits, and I realized like, oh, I, this is this should be structured like a movie, right? 
So you're meeting the character in act one and then just some things are happening and then there's a conclusion. You don't see act two. So I wrote in an act two. So now we're rethinking about it as in terms of you meet the character and you meet the problem. Hi, it's me. The problem is the inciting incident. They call it in movies. You Mm. find a letter. Okay. That jerks you out from a normal world and sends you on a journey. The journey was reading and remembering. Okay. But there was no, like there's a low moment in every movie. It's called the dark night of the soul. Mm. But basically you just need a low emotional moment. With that, I was like, this is what's fucking missing. After, I think it was after Dog Story, I was like, okay, so now you're, in, you're friends with, you know the character, you know the problem, and you've laughed a lot. And you kind of know like, okay, nothing was fine then, and things are different now. But you need a real glimpse of how not fine everything was, which led to the writing of the letter. I was like, that's the missing bit. So then I wrote in, in two days, I wrote in Birthday Bumps and Street Fighter and GTA. Because it like, it all just came out. I was like, this is, you need to know what a bad time I was having. Mm. Birthday bumps, I remember because that's something I actually used to happen with me in school. And so after that, like I had to keep moving things back and forth, this and that, whatever. Uh, But now the emotional structure of the show made sense. After that, I was like, now it's time for level three of fucking around. The band joke is my favorite joke in the show. Mm. Because it's most different from anything I've, whatever I've done. Mm. I think it's a fucking great joke. Because it's mm. so irritating. Mm-hmm. It's so annoying. But at the same time, I was like, if I saw this, I would laugh a lot. So that's yeah. why it stayed. I don't yeah. care. Like the band, we didn't get a good recording of the band joke, to be honest. But it used to like kill everywhere. And used to hear like loud groans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was quite beautiful. It's the and same so, as the water thing, right? Yeah. The water I got in the very last show of the international tour. Uh, I was ta- I was telling my manager Abhishek about it the whole time like I have this joke but I don't know I have this joke it's high stakes I don't know because I have to tell him he has to remember what are the cues right uh, but I did it once and fucking full credit to Abhishek dude he nailed it he got it, it. he got it because even yeah. on the taping on the day of the taping there was no there was a discussion we are gonna give it to the guy at DIT to do it and Neville was Neville anything you guys are and it was just like, no, no way. Oswal's doing it. And it was all like, Abhishek is doing it. Doing it. Yeah. yeah. So the drinking water reminder was cool. And these are all elements. I was like, now everything about the show is different from my previous show. Okay. The thing that's most important is that it's funny throughout. Okay. That's done. But apart from that, up to me how to do the show. Yeah. I got a narrative I really like. It has so many fucking layers. It has a twist ending. And this is the best part I like about movies with twist endings is you can watch them again and yeah. get a different thing out of it. Now yeah, that yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay. So I get a lot of messages from people who watch it a second time who are like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, you yeah. set that up. Oh, I missed that the first time. And that's really fun. For When you're watching it the first time, you're like, why? Okay, cool. And then that's, the second time you're like, that's oh, a oh. That's a huge sign of who you are from the very beginning. Like even if you watch Inc., how insensitive. The yeah. in every how insensitive sketch, there is an element of another sketch which is a part yeah. of that thing. Yeah, it's because I think you, as a human being, you like Easter egging and you want because you like seeing something that for the first time is another emotion. Second time when you see it's another emotion, and when you rewatch it again ten years later, it's it's a new emotion. Because yeah. again, that's, I was like, you 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 should do as much as you can with what you have, right? And by the end, I had to like everyone on production really cared about the show there's nothing else which is more exciting and then that's when people go above and beyond right i was like because th- sure it's like i wrote the show but it's our production everyone's this is everyone's show now the background design we came up with okay the show has layers the background represents layers that's what it is each layer is the layer of the show and yeah, yeah, i don't yeah. know if we succeeded but you know, we certainly tried our hardest and that's enough. I think you guys succeeded uh, extremely well. A friend of mine messaged me saying that Kanan special, I love how the background really d- denotes the special. And I was like, oh, oh you figured it out. Oh, and cool. Yeah. yeah. And she said, yeah, but this is what she took out of it. Yeah. She's like, it's a box inside a box. It's like unboxing, unboxing inside one box. I'm like, box. Yes. Fox. So what's incredible is that people did catch on to it. And now the reason I would say, don't say, I don't know if he succeeded. 
you did because the people who are looking for these easter eggs and narratives and closures and all of that finally found performing arts a perform a performed art bit which encompasses all of it which goes back to what you said do as much as you can when i when i was changing the structure of the show and i was doing this really up its own ass metaphor joke like this unnecessarily complex theater uh the band joke and i was like oh this is you're really reading people now <laughs> like it struck me suddenly that oh i i want to sell tickets and do big shows but by definition i'm going down a path where not many people would come and it was scary for a while but uh, i think i reconciled the idea as you can make you can do exactly what you feel like and make a small group of people very happy and that's better than making the biggest possible group of people think you're okay so i think i've put myself into a niche and not your brother <laughs> oh, i was just like <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry you enjoyed it as well. <laughs> he has know, a thick for punjabi I mean, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i kind of i've found i formed a niche and that's so the people who are coming with me are really going to enjoy what's up next and they really enjoyed this and the people who just who uh, wanted something different are slowly going to leave this thing and <laughs> yeah. that's fine you know what i mean right. i think that's a great advice what you've given me now is i think is the same reflective point for me that i'm like that's true am i serving in a faceless mass or a dedicated group of people who get what i'm trying to do and that is way more satisfying than having 10000 people who think you exist <laughs> man if you if you can sell the vision you know what i mean like i people are bought on to the vision like this guy will do something interesting i might not always like it but i'm on board for the journey because i don't know what the fuck he's going to be up to next that's exciting because people are fans of the vision not the person not the specific Thank product you. the vision and people are fans of the vision i mean that's that's fucking great dude so the artists i like please. sometimes they come out with a dud album or a dud comedy special and i'm like fine man you got to take an l i'll see you on the next one and you know it's even exciting when it's bad i'm like bro i waited 6 years for this fucking album <laughs> i can't believe it. but you know what fair play you thought it was a good idea the vision i trust is that whatever it is is the maximum of your abilities like you trust the artist to be like they gave it everything they didn't do a shoddy job that's the faith you put in the artist yeah a very and that's a faith i put in like a lot of people as well or... the faith i have in you guys i don't know if you know this but you uh, lloyd and kenny have a very weird comedy sensibility that's why i really like watching your videos because it's it's really fun because you guys do like uh, absurd shit and also like regular comedy and like some of stuff is like like lloyd is a master of like uh working with cringe he's yeah. so fucking good at it so man i i'm i i bought my ticket yeah i'm sorry <laughs> to see what you guys are doing we have one ticket sold <laughs> uh more than one dude but that's i feel like if you're worried about you're not making your niche then you're making it with every work you do there's someone who's like i've been waiting for this my full life and they're on board now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, slowly get passengers on the train. Hey man, Karan. Thank you, man. Thank you, Abhi. What you are sincerely on Netflix. <laughs> oh fuck, I forgot that. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching Journey of a Joke. Uh make sure you check out Karan Gill's comedy special Your Sincerely on Netflix. Go check it out right now. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh and if you like this series which is kind of meant for people who want to know more about comedy do let me know in the comments man like who would you want me to talk to and exactly what do you want to learn from them all right now go subscribe bye bye